A few years ago, when I was working a software development job, I joined a new team, and as I got to know a certain colleague, he came out with a little secret. Now, this colleague was the odd one out on our team because we were all Java developers, except for this guy who had mostly done Python in the past and was transitioning. Well, one day he elaborated on his Python coding past, and he'd actually published a book on Python with a well-known publisher. Well, I'd never spoken to anyone who'd written a book, so... Once again, my mind was blown. And for the rest of that day, whenever I looked at my colleague, I saw him as some kind of celebrity book author. And it never even crossed my mind that one day I would write a book myself, or even that I'd want to. Well, the fact is that today I have written and published my own programming book for developers, and it's making on average $500 per month. And I'm happy to say that I've done it in a way that's quite different to my colleague that hasn't involved any big publishers or editors. And I've really managed to maintain what's important to me, which is independence. Sounds so cheesy. And I've created a book about a Java build tool called Gradle that I wanted to have five years ago when I first started using it. And my goal for this video isn't to convince you to write a book. It's if you've ever thought writing a good book could be interesting, then by sharing my experience of seeing the opportunity and identifying what I want to put into a book and then and actually writing it, I hopefully can make it seem a little bit more achievable, even for pretty average developers like me. Oh, so modest. The chances are, if you're watching this video, you read books. And it's tempting when we read a book, like this one here, to think that the person that wrote it knows everything that's possible to know about their subject. And sometimes that's true, but they're not the kind of books I'm interested to write about, because I'm not a genius. This book, for example, which is a coding book over 400 pages long, and it reads more like a reference book, doesn't really tell a story. And it probably took months and months to write this with proofreaders and editors. Well, now with the ability for anybody to publish things online and with advanced algorithms to help people find those things, there's an opportunity to help somebody that's a few steps behind you to get to where you're at. That could be a book that explains a programming language, a framework, or tool. And these are all things that people need to know for their jobs, and by packaging all that up into a book, it's going to be something valuable that can save someone time and effort. And the book format that I went for is electronic ebook. The benefits of an ebook are that the reader gets to access it straight away, you can sell it without having to organize printing of a physical book, and you can keep that book up to date using tools that developers are used to by submitting a git push. So once I saw there was an opportunity to sell an ebook, I just had to figure out what was I going to write about. If you think about it, when developers work on a team, they help each other out all the time. Especially in a physical office, one developer might spend days explaining a framework to another developer as they're developing features. This is what people call knowledge transfer, literally taking knowledge out of your brain and transferring it into someone else's brain. I see writing an ebook as just doing that process at scale. And when you think about it that way, you can look back at the times when you have explained things to colleagues, you've invested time to bring them up to speed, and maybe consider which of those topics that you taught could become an ebook. At the time I was thinking of writing an ebook, I was using AWS and Jenkins for CI, and also this build automation tool called Gradle. And there are all things that I potentially could have written a book about. And in the end, I decided to go for Gradle because it was interesting for me, and I saw a lot of people online were struggling to learn it. Did I consider myself an expert on this topic? Absolutely not. But after a couple of years of using this tool and implementing it in projects, I definitely felt like I had some things to share, and that was enough. But let's be honest, the easy parts are seeing the opportunity and deciding what to write about. The tough part is always going to be taking action. Fortunately, using technology isn't the bottleneck when it comes to writing a book. I wrote the first version of my ebook using Google Docs. And I actually have a course and an ebook about the same topic. So I wrote the course content first, and then I translated that into an ebook. But if I was to write an ebook from scratch, I would do these three things. First of all, I'd spend an hour or two outlining all the things that I wanted to be in the ebook based on where I knew people would be starting from and where I wanted to get them to in terms of the knowledge that would be useful for them to have. Second, I would schedule five minutes every day to write a little bit of my ebook, even if that's just writing a chapter title. I know that if I sit down and start that, 
then five minutes is probably going to turn into an hour or two. And that's going to get me to where I need to be a lot quicker than telling myself that I need to sit down and work on my ebook for four hours every day. And the nice thing about writing a technical ebook is it's not just text, it's also diagrams and code samples. So you can mix it up to make the process more interesting. And the third step is to repeat until you've covered all the topics you want to include in the book. Yeah, it could have just been two steps, but. And once you've written your ebook, you literally need to export it as a PDF file. That's what people buy. So what do you do with that? Well, in my case, I already had a coding blog, which I talk about in a previous video. And on my coding blog, I placed little adverts to make people aware of my ebook. And also when I launched it, I had a list of email addresses that I could send it out to. If you don't have a coding blog, not to worry. There's also Amazon, which lets anybody publish an ebook. And you can see Amazon as just a search engine that's matching books to people that want to find information. And I don't make a load of sales on Amazon. I'm only making $500 a month total from this ebook. But by creating it, I now see myself as somebody that can publish an ebook. And I've got ideas for other books I want to write in the future. Given how much time developers spend working and solving problems each week, I believe every developer has enough knowledge in their head to write their own ebook. So let me know down in the comments whether you'd consider writing an ebook in the future.